everybody, Newsboy Audio here. Uh, having a great discussion with you guys about sound quality and uh, speaker cables. This is our now sixth try. We're having some technical difficulties over here. I'm about to pull my hair out, I know that. But anyways, I uh, got to with you this great topic of speaker wire. I want to preface this with a warning. Um, please, if you're going to comment on my videos, do so respectfully. I know that speaker wire is very hot among some of you guys. It, it, it seems like a boring topic to a lot of us, but for reasons we will get into, um, many of you have a lot of passion behind this, and, and sometimes it comes across a little extreme and a bit childish. So just please remember to be an adult. Um, as far as my recommendation for what to buy as speaker cable, let's get this right out uh, the clear, right in the front. It's what you see here, Mono Price or another company that offers 100% oxygen free copper cable. Uh, 14 gauge for long runs sometimes, unless you're gonna be pumping more wattage through it. Um, I usually use the 14 gauge for the surround sounds and the 12 gauge for my front three channels. And I'll get into that for a in a little bit. But uh, the 14 gauge or the 12 gauge co oxygen free copper is all you really need. Uh, you can get some speaker terminals on the top um, and you screw them on. Amazon has some great ones that you do screw on. Uh, some other ones that you put in and screw another thing on. All of them very much appreciated and it really makes a good product. You can also go get your sleeving and stuff. Now, why I say I use 12 gauge in the front three channel is because I'm a little excessive. Uh, most of your sound is coming out of the front three channels. So that is your center channel, your left channel, and your right channel, and a surround sound. And that's where 95% of your sound is coming from. So for me, I just want to make sure that I'm getting all I can out of those speakers. And so I usually go up to a 12 gauge or would even go consider a 10 gauge copper on that. But I'm also doing the reviews and other things like that. Other people use the copper and the aluminum. I don't personally recommend that uh, because there is more measurable difference with the aluminum. But the aluminum can be a lot cheaper as well. Um, so, you know, and again, when we get into the A-B testing discussion, you can't really distinguish the two with science. And so I'm wondering if there is an actual perceived difference between them. Anyways, so let's get into uh, the controversy. Um, the controversy with these cables is that there are some providers of more expensive cables. And many of these providers offer nothing for your money. Um, they are simply oxygen-free cabling, uh, maybe with a strand of silver or some type of silver coating on it. Uh, and they claim that it makes a difference in sound. Uh, the problem that I have with them and the problem with all the people who are going to take this very extensively is that what we call ABX testing or blind testing, uh, when we perform it comparing two speakers, this cable and say a cable that's worth $100,000, um, the listeners cannot pick out one cable over another. And we can even take the most exceptional people out there the most exceptional hearing people out there. And we can play in a blind test one speaker cable against another speaker cable. And, and what we find is you can't pick out the difference that the person, can, one person cannot say, oh, that's the $100,000 speaker, or that's the $10 speaker. They can't do that on a reliable basis. Um, they can tell that there's a difference they don't know what that difference is. And this comes down to what the problem is. A, this ABX testing tests your ability to perceive, and it also tests your ability to, to determine 
the differences between two items. And those are two separate things. Um, unfortunately, the determination portion of the, the, the results that we get is not conducive on whether or not you can perceive whether or not there's a difference in your $100,000 cable. So that doesn't mean that if I can't pick out one cable over another, that I can't perceive a difference. You see? So perceiving and being able to determine things are two different things. And the A-B testing ultimately determines the ability of the listener to determine between two different samples. But with that said, these tests are pretty damn damning because what needs to happen when we develop a product like a cable is that we need to determine whether or not we're making an improvement or not. And if we can't, then we're just kind of making it up. We're just kind of feeling that there is a better cable, that our changes have made a difference. We feel that way for a lot of reasons, but did we actually make an improvement? Did we actually maybe even make things worse? And so these are the problems that the manufacturers of these expensive cables have. And they, what they do is they, they, they mislead their customers many times in the language that they use on their packaging. And in some cases, they're even to the point of being fraudulent and promising things that just cannot happen. Uh, for instance, there's uh, companies that make $1,000 HDMI cables. Uh, again, an HDMI cable transfers a digital signal, and I can't express this enough, but if it passes the test and can pass the signal, passing the signal any better doesn't make any difference. It doesn't suddenly improve your your image quality or your sound quality. No, it just doesn't. And to be honest with you, the data we are transferring is no different than financial data from the customer or the video data you're seeing that we're transferring thousands of miles across wiring. And if we really were concerned about the issues that they were dealing with, we would use parity bits and other things to make sure that if we did have an error, we could check it and we can correct it. And we can actually do that. So in cases of where we have discussions about jitter, whether or not it occurs and how frequently it occurs, well, a simple parity bite would be able to solve whether or not jitter occurs. And the fact that we have one bite that's off is very minor, especially in the high bit rates that we're using in CD quality. So when we're talking about HDMI, when we're talking about DVD, or I'm sorry, USB, when we're talking about optical cables, don't buy into the hype. What you need is a cable tester and you need to test your cables appropriately. Again, um, there's a another YouTuber uh, named um, Linus, he came out with a video testing hundreds of these HDMI cables. And he, what he found was that despite the more expensive ones claims, they had just as many problems as the less expensive ones. Some of the cables would have a, a single wire that was out of place or crossed with a different wire. Others cables would have too much leakage, what they call leakage, where the signal would degrade. But Still others, many others that they had would pass very well. So if you buy from a supplier that tests their cables, or if you could buy your own tester, you can make sure that you're not having these issues and you can solve most of those problems without spending thousands of dollars on an HDMI cable. Uh, so as far as interconnects are concerned, like I said, copper, gold, um, and that uh, power cables is the other one that I wanted to touch upon. Power cables are probably a scam. And the reason why the power cables are so ridiculous and despite what they want to claim or despite how much they want to sell you on them, 
these things. It's kind of ridiculous. If I plug a one meter cable into the wall, it's not going to change the fact that the same copper wire runs from the wall to the power station, sometimes 25 miles away or more. That's a huge difference. So why does one or five meters matter? And if you are getting upset with a company selling $1,000 power cables, well, I can understand that a little bit. They are ripping people off, and they're quite frankly fraudulent in many cases. But that's not to the point where I, I want to condone your violence or you threatening another human being or you insulting another human being. That is not appropriate. So again, when we're talking about the power cables, they're garbage. If a power cable actually made that difference, then the power conditioners in your amplifier are flawed and there has to be something going on there. See, because when the power comes into your amplifier, it's AC. It's coming up and down and up and down and up and down. What we've got to do when you, we get into your amplifier is we got to convert it to DC. And we got to make it a nice flat panel. And what, how we do that is we use a capacitor and we use a transformer. The transformer changes the voltage. The capacitor starts smoothing it out. We also may use some diodes to get rid of it initially, the up and downs, and then we pump it through capacitors in order to make it smooth. So if there is some problem with a power line or the power conditioner or the power cable uh, you have is sending inappropriate pipe spikes and things like that, the capacitors should absorb that power and even it out so it goes through the system at an even level. And proper amp designs take this into account. Um, so again, if you need a power cable to try to somehow even out your power, um, you're probably buying into magic. And I'm not going to support that on my channel. What you're going to hear from me is what makes sense economically and what makes sense to the listener. And that is oxygen-free copper cable. I'm not promoting any brands. I buy from Monoprice. This is a Monoprice product um, because I know they don't charge me too much, and I know that they, uh, uh, um, I know they don't charge me much, and I also know that they charge, they give me a good product and do what they say they are going to do. Um, for me, that's worth it. But Amazon also has options, as does Parts Express and other things, and I trust many of those brands as well. So go with any of those other brands. Um, so like I said, don't spend your money on $1,000 speakers cable. Buy $1,000 more of speakers and enjoy yourself. Okay, thank you for listening. Please subscribe and like my channel. And as always, uh, enjoy your listening experience. Thank you.